Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. This week we have been doing all kinds of studying art made with hearts because Monday was Valentine's Day and we talked about Robert Indiana and his love stamp that started all of the love stamps for people to use in the corner of their envelopes where they want to make sure that someone knows that they love them. Then we met James Goldcrown, who was a street artist, and then Romero Brito, who also is a street artist, and he is in Miami still doing his art, and today is Jim Dine Day. And when we were doing art with the ABCs and 123s of art, we did Jim Dine's four, four hearts. And his artwork is so interesting, and we're going to sing our hello song, and then we'll take a look at his picture. He kind of looks like Eric Carle to me. I always think men, friendly gentlemen with um, white hair and a beard kind of remind me of Eric Carle, and um, we'll take a look at him and see what he's been up to. But let's start out with, hello, nice to see you. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. All right, Jim Dine. And I also wanted to sing Love is Something If You Give It Away a little bit later. I hope I remember. It's actually called The Magic Penny. And it, you hold it tight and you won't have any. But if you lend it, you spend it, you'll have so many They'll roll all over the floor, just like a penny when you drop it. But we'll first talk about our artist. Let's take a look at him up on the chart. Look at his friendly face. And here he is. He's wearing glasses like I do. He's got a gray beard like someone else that we've met. And here's his name, Jim Dine. This is one of his hearts that's called concentric hearts. And concentric, if you remember from Kandinsky, it's where one heart is inside of another heart, is inside of another heart, is inside of another heart. And we're going to do something kind of with this as, as an inspiration, but we're going to do printmaking. Now, I kind of got concerned because I was worried if you don't have a brayer, and I'm going to show you that tool in a minute, but let's hear a little bit about Jim Dine. Jim Dine was born in 1935 in Ohio. And that's the place where we were talking about when we were doing apples, how the apples were all planted over the Ohio Valley. I love to bring back in old facts that we've used before because it, in your brain, if you remember facts that are tied to other facts, it helps you remember things. And I think it's really important to become as brilliant of an artist as you can. Now, he is an artist and a poet and he did performance, which means when you act it out, and he did pop art. Now listen to the things he can find in his art, and I hope after this class, you will look him up on the internet because he puts Pinocchio in his art. He uses a lot of hearts. A funny thing he did for a while was he was using bathrobes. He would put a real bathrobe on his art and he would paint it and around it, and sometimes he would even put tools on there. One has a bathrobe with a screwdriver. Does it go together? I don't know. But if you look at it, you think, oh, that has good balance. And you look at it and you think, what's the first thing that my eye landed on? Well, for me, that one, I saw the bathrobe first because it looked like a bathrobe my dad used to have. And that's when you start tying your life to the art, you'll remember it even more. Now, he makes colorful paintings. He does photographs. He makes prints and sculptures, and sculptures, you know, can be made out of clay or metal or wood, all kinds of materials. Now, why did he use tools, you wonder? He grew up with tools. He came from a family of people who sold tools, and he's always been enchanted, or it's like a little magical feeling, enchanted by these objects made by anonymous, or you don't know who they are, hands. And he, once he studied poetry, he said, all right, I got a degree in poetry, but I want to be an artist. So he went back to the University of Ohio where he got his fine arts degree. And then he moved to New York and he began 
stage performances and cities any big it, they became known as happenings. They'd say, hey, did you see Jim dying downtown? He's got a happening. And he would do funny things and interesting things and memorable things. Then by the time that was the 1960s, he started switching his focus towards painting and drawing and not doing the happenings on stage. And he was shown in art museums alongside Roy Lichtenstein, who we studied when we did if Picasso painted a snowman, and Andy Warhol, who we also did during the Nutcracker. And he didn't ever consider himself a member of the pop art movement. But right now, he lives and works in New York, and he go, move, goes up north to Walla Walla, Washington. His art is in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. If you get to go to London, his art is in the Tate Museum, and he also has art in many other museums and in the center of art in Minneapolis. And I think let's get started with our printmaking. Let me set my things over to the side, pick up my table and show you my materials for today. Now styrofoam is something that doesn't decompose in the ground. So oftentimes people don't like to use styrofoam because you can't put it in the recycling bin because it doesn't recycle. Like the things that go in the recycle are, being, are things that will, if it's in next to soil and wetness, it, they'll just get all murky and yucky and they'll just turn into the ground. But styrofoam doesn't do it. Most styrofoam, I know those little peanuts will, those ones, those will. But we want to use styrofoam. So I looked at three stores before I finally went to one grocery store where 50 of these plates were $1.50. Not so bad, you could use these over and over and over again. If you don't want to spend money and buy styrofoam, look at these and you try and think, where did these come from at my house? Here's one. It's a long and rectangular. Here's one that's a squatty rectangle. And here's a white one that's another rectangle. The thing about these, though, I wanted to use them, but there are letters on the back. And that I don't want it to print on my art. What's on the back of this? Letters and numbers and the recycling sign. And then this one, letters and numbers. There, I could make it small here, but I thought I really want it to be a heart shape. So I'm going to use a plate. So I went and bought these. Now, in order for it to work as a printing piece, I'm going to use this one as my paint place. And here is my brayer. Let me show you it in here. It has a handle and it's like a little roller. It's like a steam roller. And it rolls over the paint and then you roll it over the piece that you want to paint. And that makes it all smooth and all the same thickness of paint. So that's why I have my brayer. I'm going to show you what it looks like with a dark piece of paint from here for anyone who doesn't have a brayer. I'll use the paints that we used on Monday but I wanted you to see those. I'm gonna put it up here for right now because what I want to do is show you how I'm going to prepare this plate. Now you know on a plate, it has the flat, flat bottom and it has a ridged side to keep your food from falling off. So I want to go past that. I'm gonna to go to where it's flat and I'm going to go around there and try and stay away from the curve because what I want is a piece of styrofoam that isn't curved. And I'm gonna turn it over because the flattest side is the bottom of the plate. So you see, here it is. I'll put this other part up on the table if I want to do another one. Now I asked you to bring a dull pencil. I brought a few pencils because one is dull and one is sharp because I thought, well maybe I will want to do um, one that is a smaller hole. So let me put this here. Maybe I'll put a piece of green paper behind it so you can see it better. I am going to draw a heart. And if you want to, you could cut it out of a piece of paper and trace it because that is really easier. So I'm going to cut this. It has to be as small as this paper. And I can do around my thumb, which we learned before, but I'm not going to do a deep V. I'm going to do it this way. And once I trace it, I'll cut it out. 
and show you what I mean. Remember you keeping it on the fold. But if it doesn't stay on the fold and you have two pieces, you can just hold it up there and do it that way. Let me set this over here. Oh, this is a nice size. I hope that it fits. Oh, it does. Look how it fits perfectly on my styrofoam. Now, I'm going to go around that without pressing too hard. I don't want to cut all the way through the styrofoam. I just want to press down where it's going to make a little line without piercing through the whole plate. Because if that happens, the heart will cut out. And if that happens, it'll still work. I'll show you, because I'm going to cut it out eventually. But there it is. My heart is drawn, and I don't think you can see it very well. So now I'm going to poke, poke, poke little, sorry, I keep saying poke, 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 poke little round circles, because wherever I have pressed down, the paint will not stay. It'll go around to all the high parts on my plate and stay away from anywhere I press down. So I'm going to put dots all around mine. Maybe you'll do dots. Maybe you'll do um, zigzags or any kind of pattern that you think will look good. I'm making it in a row, and I'm taking my time. I think I'm going to use one that has a little bit duller pencil because then I can make a bigger dot. There, that's better. It depends on how big your pencil is, how thick your line will be. So I'm still drawing my polka dots. I'm doing, going the whole rim around it. I guess I could do one brayer and show you just with dots and then wipe it off and then show you what I do in some other shapes and then wipe it off because in between colors you have to wipe it off. But I think I'm just going to do all my design because I don't think I can line it back up perfectly and then it will make it kind of a mess. I wonder, can you see those dots on it? Just barely. I will do now a line around that. It doesn't have to be a line. You can do zigzags like I said, but I want mine to be concentric. One heart inside another, inside another. I'm not poking all the way through because on the back it hasn't poked all the way through. Now I'm going to do some triangles, I think. That would be a good shape on mine. You can decide if you want to put more hearts, triangles, some circles, whatever you want. Just some lines. It doesn't even have to be a shape because you know how we talk about art and how it is yours to decide. Now remember, if there's someone who's trying to tell you what shapes to do, and telling you how to do your art, you tell them, here, let me get you a styrofoam plate and let them draw their own because we don't want someone telling us what things we have to put in our art. And I think it's sometimes because people want it to look a certain way. If they get to make it themselves, then they won't be so busy telling us what to do. I like to do my own. And it's not in a rude way. You wouldn't say, hey, go get your own plate. You say, let me find a plate for you so you can make your own. Because I think they just want it to look a certain way and make it be beautiful that they start telling us what they want us to do. So you decide how you'll handle that. And sometimes, you know, teachers have you sometimes work on a project that everybody does the same thing. Like I did a great big heart art piece on a mural with my class one year and everyone put their heart art on there. They painted on one big giant piece of paper. And I said, just make sure that you don't paint on someone else's. That was the directions that day. Another day, we did another one where everyone got to paint with one color. So if someone said, oh, I'm going to use pink, and then everyone else says, well, I won't use pink. I'll use another color. And they would use that color and paint hearts with just that color. And if their friends have done a red heart, you could go and put pink polka dots on it if you were the pink person. And you just had to know that everyone got to work on the same art, just making it more and more colorful. You can see now I'm doing scallops, just like ocean waves, around each of my triangles. And I think you'll really notice it once I put the paint on, boys and girls. I'm sorry that it's hard to see something on white on camera, but you'll see how I'm doing it. I think I'll just put some more dots on here, and I think I will call it my printing process is done. Now I brought light paint 
for um, most of mine, but I want you to see a dark color. I'll put it and print it on a light colored paper. If you have dark paper, you'll use a light color paint and print. If you have a light colored paper, you would need a darker color. I'm going to bring my orange out and have it be my paper. And if I want to print it and then paste it on there, I will do that by doing this color first. All right, now, with my brayer, I can put this pink in here and get the ink on there. That's what it usually is when you're printing as ink, but I'm putting paint. So I'm putting all this magenta paint in here in my old meat container, and I'm going to put maybe a little white here and here and here. There, okay. Maybe a little more, I'll put some pink. Mix it up. I'm still mixing it up in here. And then I'm going to smooth it out. Put this back in here. Get my brayer ready. And I'll show you what to do if you don't have a brayer. So here's my paint, and here's my brayer. I get it in the ink, and I roll it down. And where I roll it, it gets it all on the brayer evenly. Then I take my heart, let me move my pencils over, and roll it over my styrofoam. Now you'll be able to see my design. Let me get this green paper out of here. I'm just rolling it and rolling it. I wonder if you don't have a brayer, if you could maybe use a jar, or what would roll? You don't want to use your um, family's um, rolling pin, because then every time you make a, a pie, the ink will be on their pie. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I think I'm gonna really put it on the, no, I better put it on the orange. Oh, don't let the paint dry. I'll put it on here, set it down, and hold it there and press, press, press. Iron, iron, iron. Will the print show? Or did I let it dry? Oh, you can't see it very well, boys and girls, but it has the art on here. Oh, I like it. I'm gonna cut it out and I will paste it on another piece of paper. I wonder if I use the white with it will show up even better on a dark piece of paper. When I did this at home, I did red on it, and oh, it's so pretty. Let me see if I can do this with another color. Let me use my paper towel and wipe this off, and I'll show you what it looks like as a um, if I have to use a brush if you don't have a brayer. Now, if I use my white paint and put it at the end down here. And I'll get a brush and brush it across on my styrofoam and see what happens there. It goes in the cracks a little bit, so I'm a little worried that it might take over and not let me show the paint. We'll see, I have to work fast. Otherwise, when you use a brayer, it goes on super thin and it doesn't stay on there well enough to really paint and um, print it, but we'll see about it. Because what I wanted to do was I want to first print it and then I'm going to draw around it to make it a concentric circle. That's the idea of today's lesson was doing it as a concentric circle. But I've mixed it with pink, so who knows if it's gonna show up. Come here, green paper. Let's see if this is gonna work. Move it over, set it down, and iron it. Keep your fingers crossed, boys and girls, and see if it works. This is really a thin um, paper plate, so I think that was part of the reason it didn't show up very well. Oh, if it wasn't so thick, I think it would have been really great. But now what I wanted to do was to draw around the outside and make it concentric. So I'm gonna dry it off on my paper background here. Move my paints out of the way and I'll show you what I plan to do. I'm trying to dry some of the paint so that I can draw a little bit on there. Okay, there it is. 
Now I'm going to use a skinny pin and go around this and do my concentric art around and around. It's still not going to show up very well, boys and girls. I think what I will do is just do my concentric, oh, get off of there, concentric heart and put it in. The printmaking isn't very good on, on the camera. It is in person, so when you do this in person and you do it with your teacher maybe, it'll show up for you and I think you will like it that way. But since this doesn't really show up very well on camera, I will just put this green one on my red paper because that's kind of Valentine colors. And I will go around it and glue it and then I'll show you how to make it concentric using your other materials. Put it here, or do I like the, the one I did that was pink and orange? That one was even prettier. Green one, stay over there. Cut this out, and it's even drier, so it will show up even better. I'm gonna speed through so you'll see it before we have to say goodbye. I hope your Valentine week has been great, boys and girls, because this has been fun for me. I'll glue this on and I'll show you concentric is one inside the other inside the other. I'll put this on the blue paper. That'll show up even better. And now I can use my pen that I had intended to use, the skinny guy. And I can do my heart and I can do a like little lace around the edge. That makes a second heart. That's with the skinny part. And it kind of brings in the zigzag and triangles that I had drawn on my styrofoam and did my print the first time. There's one heart. Now I can use one that is even bigger and go around that. And I go slowly and carefully because I want to make it concentric and make it inside the other. And then I can use a different, even these smelly pens. And I might use a purple on that one or a dark blue and do, oh, come back here you, and do some circles to make another concentric circle around. Mmm. These pens are the smelly pens that the studio has. I don't have these smelly pens, and this one is mm, blueberries. It smells great. I think since I started out with orange, to create some kind of balance, I think I will go around that. Even though orange pen on a blue background won't really turn out orange, it will still be pretty. So I'm going to do this and go around that for my concentric and go around that for my concentric. And I might do some kind of Brito sun rays out to the side. Love is something if you give it away. You give it away. You give it away. Love is something if you give it away. You'll end up having more. It's just like a magic penny. You hold it tight and you won't have any. You lend it, spend it, and you'll have so many. They'll roll all over the floor. Oh, love is something if you give it away. You give it away. You give it away. Love is something if you give it away. You'll end up having more you'll end up having more. Even quieter, you'll end up having more. Da -da -da dun 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 So here is my concentric circle valentine. And if I want, I can leave it like this, or I can cut it out and add a message on the back and give it to someone and let them know they are my valentine, even though Monday was Valentine's Day. Boys and girls, it's been a really fun week. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you, oh, I don't even know when it will be, but you know what I'm doing? 
I'm doing a book about Pepette, which is a rabbit, and they go to France and they see four different artists and each one paints a portrait of the rabbit. So if you know anything about rabbits, look about rabbits between now and March and we'll do that together. Here's my Valentine. Will you be my Valentine? Thanks a lot, boys and girls, for joining me and I will see you, I should say soon. All right, bye-bye.